Good evening. Glad to have you join me. Um, I'm going to say hi. Hi, Avril. Good to see you. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, I just felt I needed to explain a little bit on the Lionsgate portal. Um, I learned about this for the first time last year. I didn't really take it seriously. And I, I just felt that I needed to explain a little bit in terms of what I was posting on Twitter about Lionsgate. But the, the, the main thing is there's a lot of videos and content creators that are speaking about manifestation. And manifestations can be done in different ways. Um, some ways work better than others. Um, depending on what's happening in your life, um, the kind of energy that you're in and really just what you're trying to bring into your life, whether it's actually in alignment with your life. So um, happy that you guys are here. Please um, like the video, um, like the live and share the live as much as you can so we can get the message out. But Tonight, I just want to teach briefly about Lionsgate. This particular Lionsgate portal is a powerful one because we are in the season of Ma'at. Ma'at is the Kemetic or ancient Egyptian goddess of justice. So she's normally portrayed as kneeling with you know, feathers, uh, wings outstretched, and the symbol of, of the scales, and she's really about balancing the scales, and I think the story that you're probably going to be familiar with is that of when you die before you go into the afterlife, the uh, ma'at will weigh your heart against a feather. And if your heart is lighter than the feather, then it means you can pass through and go to the afterlife. And if your heart is heavy, then you cannot pass through. It's, it's kind of links to our African traditional spiritual perspective about, you know, if you haven't done everything that you're supposed to do in this life, then you... When you go to go go cross over to the afterlife, your ancestors may send you back because you've got unfinished business. But the season of Ma'at begins on the twenty third of July and ends on the twenty second of August. Um, I also encourage you to watch Gogo Omkulum Kanyezi. She's also on TikTok, on Twitter, and on YouTube. Um, she has a great teaching about the season of Ma'at, which is about bringing justice and fairness. And this season of Ma'at is particularly powerful or potent because in terms of numerology, the year 2024, the numbers 2, 0, 2, and 4 add up to 8. 8 is the number of karma or divine justice. Um, it will speak. It will be karma, which is where what you re you reap what you sow. So if you've done bad things, then those bad things will come back to you. And the opposite is dharma. It's again, it's a Hindu concept, which is you reaping the goodness that you've sown in this life and in previous lives. So welcome to all our viewers. As I was saying, I'm just um, going to briefly explain. The concept of Lion's Gate Triple Eight. I'm sure if you watch YouTube, the algorithm is bringing up all the videos, um, and there's different things that you can do um, around manifestation. Um, but the start of all, all is that um, what they call Lion's Gate as a portal is um, really it opens on the eighth of August, so eight eight. And I've put triple eight in the title because it's the eighth of Aug the, the the eighth day of the eighth month of August, and this year is an eight year, so it's triple um, it's triple eight, 
and therefore again a very powerful window for manifestation so it's a good time to prepare it also we're also in the new moon which is also a very good time for manifestations um, that's why I'm saying tonight I mean the new moon itself was on Sunday evening and when you do new moon rituals any new moon it doesn't necessarily have to be this one the energy of the new moon is strongest on the day of the new moon and then two days thereafter so today is the probably the last day that the new moon energy is at its most powerful so if you still have time you know before midnight you can go and you know do your manifestations you can do them outside by the light of the moon but you don't necessarily have to um, you can still do them inside the house uh, we are in Johannesburg and it's very cold at the moment so I wouldn't advise that you go outside and try and do any new moon ritual you'll probably catch a cold but I just wanted to as I said chat a little bit so we, we I've mentioned that it is a triple eight day because it's the eighth day of the eighth month in an eight year so Karma is probably going to be at her strongest this year. Um, it's, karma is, 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 is divine justice is going to really be a feature for many of the lives of people, particularly so chosen ones, those who are um, called and gifted spiritually. Um, this, this, the, you'll find that the energy is very intense. You're probably struggling to sleep. Maybe you're going through spiritual awakening symptoms. And it really just is the universe and God and our guides way of prompting us to really connect with our guides, with God, with our higher selves and, and, and really tap in spiritually because everything is spiritual. Um, nothing that is, the, I mean, the word inspiration comes from the Latin root word for spirit. So anything that you see, can feel, can touch, or even hear, like music, starts out as a concept in the spiritual realm. And that is the energy of creation that we bring into this physical realm. But it's, it all starts in the spirit and, and in the mind. So just to briefly touch on some of the things that I, I learned about around this, with this um, Lionsgate season, this portal, um, so Lionsgate is really a, a time when the there is an astronomical alignment between Sirius, which is the brightest star in our Milky Way galaxy, they're known as the dog star, um, and it is a direct alignment with the sun and 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 with the earth, and that creates a powerful um, portal spiritually for for manifestations for those of you who are interested in star seeds and reading about star seeds you'll find some people have what we call a syrian star seed lineage that means you were previously incarnated and you come from the star system of sirius if you read about the dogon in mali they speak about how beings came from sirius b um that that star system and they imparted a lot of the knowledge to them around um, astrology and cosmo cosmology cosmology particularly and the cosmology is what has um, they were able they're able to tell what is happening out in space even though they don't have you know advanced telescopes or um, satellites or, or any of that fancy equipment but it's a particularly powerful time because it's the new moon. It is the lion's gate for this year. It's, um, the energy really peaks on the 8th of, of August, um, which is in a couple of days' time. So it's the day after tomorrow. So it's a good time to cleanse and prepare yourself and communicate with the universe um, in whatever way you prefer, whether it is prayer, meditation, whether it's speaking to your ancestors, and this is the time to ask for what you want. The most powerful concept or thing about manifestation, which even 
Jesus Christ taught in the Bible was that your feelings are the major way in which your answers, your prayers get answered. Yes, you can say the words, but your dominant feelings, which are driven by your dominant thoughts, are what bring that energy into manifestation from the spiritual into the physical. Um, in the Bible, Jesus says, um, you may ask anything in my name. And, and you shall receive it. And I discovered that there's a line that was taken out of the translations of the Bible at the time, which was, ask anything in my name and be surrounded by your answer and you shall receive it. So the key is being surrounded by your answer. Whatever you're asking for, you need to feel the feelings as though you already have it. And you need to affirm it to yourself that you have it because the fact that you are thinking about it and want it, it means that in the spirit, this thing has been gifted to you. But in order for you to, to bring it into manifestation, you have to feel the feeling. So for instance, um, and, I, and I shared this recently with one of my, my clients when we had our, our session, she, she came for a reading and, and, and I did some counseling with her. And I said, imagine you want a Louis Vuitton bag, right? Um, and it can be anything. It doesn't have to be a Louis Vuitton bag. It could be a pair of red bottoms. It could be, you know, a Burberry coat. It could be anything. It could be a new job. It could be a baby. It could be a husband. But we'll use the, the Louis Vuitton bag as an example. So you're going to walk, you're going to imagine yourself going into Santon City, the Diamond Walk, you know, just feel how it feels to actually, for the first time, be able to walk into that Louis Vuitton store, actually having the money um, to, to, to buy this handbag. Um, you're not worried about the bills or paying the bond or the electricity running out. Maybe you've gone, you're on prepaid, but you actually have extra money You've got 20,000 rand and you can afford for the first time in your life to, to buy this handbag. How does that feel? Right? Um, you know, maybe you feel a sense of accomplishment. Maybe you feel proud because you're rewarding yourself maybe for something you've done, a good job at work or you've finished your master's dissertation, whatever. Um, but you're feeling this feeling of accomplishment and joy to go and you know, be able to buy this handbag and, and I'm speaking to ladies, but I mean, for men, it's, you can, you can, you can take it as it resonates. You walk into this, um, diamond walk at Santon city. Maybe you're lucky and you're flying to Doha and you go into the store that's in the airport or wherever it is in the world, or maybe it's in London or wherever you walk into the store and you know, the designer stores are very good at giving you that personalized attention because you're spending a lot of money, right? So imagine how it feels to be waited on hand and foot. Maybe they ask you to sit down. Maybe they offer you a glass of champagne. Uh, maybe they bring out all the bags to show you and you then choose the bag that you want, the one you've been eyeing. How, do, how does that feel to pick out that bag? Um, how does it feel to take the cash out of your handbag, maybe you've got cash, or to swipe your card and pay for that handbag. And, you know, how does it feel to walk out of the store with an actual Louis Vuitton um, carrier shopping bag, um, you know, with, with, with your new Louis Vuitton bag inside? Or maybe you're one of those that doesn't want to miss out, so you'll take all your stuff out of your handbag and put what can fit into the teeny tiny little Louis Vuitton bag. And you now put that Louis Vuitton bag on and you walk out of the store with all the other stuff in the carrier bag. But the, the what I'm trying to convey here is the concept of feelings. Your feelings are what bring through that manifestation. So even though you don't have the 20,000 Rand and even though you don't have the Louis Vuitton bag, hold on to that feeling for as long as you can every day throughout the day, even if it's just for five minutes. 
and eventually when the time comes you will manifest a louis vuitton bag because we communicate with the universe through our feelings the universe operates on frequency and vibration and when we talk of alchemy and magic and manifestation it's really about aligning our thoughts our feelings with what we want and that is what the universe delivers to us and if you really think about it the times when you are miserable and things aren't going well and every time somebody asks you you tell them look i'm miserable and things aren't going well things get worse and that's because our dominant feelings are of you know desperation anger fear lack all low vibrational emotions so as long as we stay in a low vibrational state we attract situations that make us even worse we more angry more fearful more annoyed and, and so on and and we spend then more time thinking about how tough things are how bad things are how horrible the world is the world delivers more of that to us so that's just the basic principle of manifestation that um i just wanted to expand on and share so if we go back to Lionsgate, so what a reader and energy healer, her name is Shavi Zain, um, and she is on YouTube. And if you go to my Twitter post, I, I have posted the link there. What she shared was that this new moon, it's important to take the time to break the generational curses. So she says you should actually spend some time in prayer meditation and then say this declaration over your life and it's it, it's it's important to write this down um and it says all generational curses over myself my ancestors my offspring the parent of my children or if you have more than one baby daddy or baby mama it's okay no, nobody's judging you out here the parent or parents of my children and their ancestors is now destroyed in spirit and in flesh i'm going to see if i can type that uh, i want us to see i see there's a whole bunch of messages um i want to see if i can type that somewhere in the chat um I'm just yeah no I'm, I'm really challenged with tech today but um I'll, I'll 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 find a way to um to share this um let me just see what i can do here to share um but i'll read it out again it says all generational curses over myself my ancestors, my offspring, the parent of my children and their ancestors is now destroyed in spirit and in flesh. I'm going to see if I'm going to try and hold this up. If you can read it, if you can read backwards, good for you. If you want to take a screenshot, um, please feel free. I'll hold it here for a little bit. Um, because you're breaking the generational curse over yourself. You're breaking the generational curse over all your descendants that come after you, those that are genetically related to you, your children, your children's children and their children. And you're also breaking the generational curse over your spouse or the parent of your children, the father of your children or the mother of your children or their mothers, if you have more than one. As I said, I'm not out here to judge. You know, relationships don't work out. These things happen. But you're breaking the curses over the parent of your children as well as their ancestors. Because remember, your child carries genetic um, lineage from both you and your partner. So if you only break the curses for your partner, or you only break the curses over you and not over your partner, um, it means then the job is half done. So you're breaking the curses over yourself. You're breaking the curses over 
the parent of your children. You're breaking the curses over your ancestors because you're the one that has chosen in this generation to break those curses. And you're breaking the curses over everybody else that comes after you that is in your lineage. So I'm just going to repeat one more time and that it says all generational curses over myself, my ancestors, my offspring, the parent of my children and their ancestors is now destroyed in spirit and in flesh. So it's not enough to say the words. You must feel it in your heart. You must believe it. You must have conviction. And each time things happen that remind you of those former days when you were cursed and things didn't go well, remind yourself that that curse is broken. You have broken that curse. You have declared, you've made a declaration and you have done this before God and your ancestors and you are claiming the promise which says in the Bible that you have the power to trample upon snakes and scorpions and to overcome all of the power of the enemy. If you want to add in Jesus' name, if you're a Christian, that's fine, you can do that. If you're not a Christian, that's also fine. Remember the words of your mouth and what you hold in your heart as your thoughts and your feelings. Those are the things that manifest in your life. So that is very important to do to break the generational curses. The other thing that hinders our manifestations is, as I said, the low vibrational fears and attitudes that we hold. So attitudes are very deeply held beliefs. Maybe they were formed when you were a child. Maybe you had something traumatic happen to you. And these things were formed when you were a child. And you now need to get rid of those fears because remember, as long as you are fearful, angry, annoyed, jealous, envious, all of those low vibrational feelings, they actually hinder your manifestation. So the other thing you want to say is, I destroy and release all fears, known and unknown. I'm just going to hold the card up. Maybe you want to read it. Maybe you want to take a screenshot. And I'm going to just read it again. And all you're going to say is, I destroy and release all fears, known and unknown. So what you'll do with these two declarations, this is the first one. For those that are just joining, you can screenshot if you want to. Um, and then this is the second one. You're going to take these write them on a, each of them on a piece of paper. You're going to say them aloud with absolute conviction in your heart and find a fireproof bowl, china, glass, metal, whatever, as long as it doesn't burn. And you're going to set fire to the piece of paper that you read out that you wrote on. Um, I've already done mine, so... Um, I'm just keeping these for future reference and for my teachings. But you're going to set fire. So the act of setting fire releases this energy and this declaration into the universe. And what you're then going to do is from here on out, whenever you feel fearful, whenever you feel angry, afraid, whenever you feel apprehensive, Whenever you feel any low vibrational emotions and worry, anxiety, and you're anxious about getting your manifestation come true or happen, you're going to remind yourself that the curse is broken and you have released the fears. And if you're a Christian, it's good to read the Bible and read the um, Bible verses and scriptures that help to support your manifestation. If you are not necessarily a Christian, you may want to say positive affirmations to yourself um, so that you maintain that feeling of optimism and joy and expectancy because you must 
believe and you must expect that miracle to happen in your life. The thing that you're asking for. Believe that it's going to happen and expect it. Um, the moment you feel like, oh, you know, I'm not sure, maybe, maybe not, let me just try. It's, it's not going to happen or it's going to be delayed because you've got to be absolutely convinced um, for it to happen. I mean, if you go back to the Bible, the reason why Jesus couldn't do miracles in Nazareth is because people didn't believe in him because a prophet is not honored in his or her own home. And because he or she is wasn't... Um, how do I put it? They people didn't believe. They he he couldn't do any miracles. And for those where he did the miracles successfully, he often said, "Your faith has saved you." Like the woman who had the issue of blood, and the mother whose daughter was possessed by a demon. He said to her, "Your faith has saved you." So it's it's very important that you have faith. You believe that this thing that you're asking for, that you're manifesting that it's going to happen. I'm going to share something else as well um, that Shavi Zain shared. Um, so what I'm reading out is stuff that you do as part of your new moon manifestation in preparation for Lionsgate. You've got to break the generational curses. You've got to release the fears. And the re reason for that is she had a dream where the portal was really a tiny, tiny hole. And that tiny hole, she looked at it and thought, why is there a hole in this wall? So she's inside the room, there's a wall, there's a tiny pinhole there, but she can see outside. And she actually says in the dream, I'm thinking some bug or something is going to crawl through that hole. And sure enough, a, a lizard call, calls through and it's called a salamander and it's a what they call a rainbow or a fire salamander it's very colorful with different rainbow colors but it is very tiny the size of a pin this hole and this creature comes through but as it comes through and it comes into the room it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and pretty much fills the room and when she then consulted with her guides and she looked up she understood that the salamander is a creature of earth and fire. It symbolizes transformation. And because it's in the rainbow colors, it also then symbolizes abundance. So according to her, the message was the portal is not going to be, you know, you have the movies where the, the portal is a big swirling round, you know, kind of wormhole or doorway with lights. The, the Lion's Gate portal this year is very, 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 very small, right? And in order for you to fit through that portal energetically and come through the other side and into your abundance, you need to leave behind all of the baggage, all of the anger, the pain, the disappointment, the things that didn't go well. You need to forgive yourself. You need to forgive the people that hurt you and allow yourself to go through that transformation on the 8th of August and come out the other side. So it's important to cleanse, it's important to meditate, it's important to let go, it's important to not have any grudges, it's important to not have a heavy heart about anything, it's important to be joyful and expectant and in, be in the highest vibration possible. Now, in terms of the vibration, and I'm going to share this, what tends to happen when you pray and you're looking for abundance and you're looking for justice and you're praying to God and you're sending out messages to the universe is that the darkness, remember we live in a world of polarity, light and darkness, good and evil, wrong and right, right? The darkness will fight back. Remember, there are people that are attached to you who are karmic from previous lives, from current lives, people who don't want the best for you, right? Those people are going to latch onto the, your energy and they're going to hang on to you for dear life. A lot of these people are probably narcissists. They're energy vampires. They've been using your energy to get by. They're going to hold on to you and they're going to send you negative energy to weigh you down so that you are low vibrational, so that you don't pass through this portal into your abundance, right? 
so that you don't get your divine justice. You don't get what you deserve, right? The, the devil and evil people will send energy and spirits to convince you that a your manifestation is not working. So the moment you start to feel doubt or fear, know that that is not of God. That is not from your guides. That is not from your higher self. It is the darkness fighting back to keep you in that low vibration, right? You then want to make sure that you keep yourself in a positive and optimistic and joyful frame of mind, which is high vibrational. So even if you don't see physically with your eyes or feel or touch the thing that you are praying for or hoping for, have faith that it's going to happen because by believing only then will you see if you wait until you see before you believe then what is the point so don't allow the devil or the dark entities to scare you they will send you low vibrational energy so that you you feel bad about whatever you're doing or you feel stupid or you feel it's useless or you feel it's a waste of time they will send you lying dreams um, that's the message that I got from my ancestors where I've been praying for certain thing, but the dream that I had indicated the opposite. And the message that I got was that that's a lying dream. That's not a message from us. That is the low vibrational people around you that are trying to pull you down and make you feel that something's wrong. Um, and as long as you feel like something is wrong, you're not going to manifest the thing that is right for you. So just guard against the negative thoughts and feelings, the lying dreams, and understand that, you know, if God is for you, who can be against you? Your ancestors and your guides have put this desire in you for a reason. It's because they've gifted you this thing already in spirit. Remember, there are people who actually make it a habit of going to spiritualists and inquiring about other people's lives because they're so low vibrational. They're not able to manifest anything or create anything. They live off other people's energy and create off other people's energy, right? So remember that those people are also watching you. They're also watching your lives. They're going and doing inquiries about you and they are... Um, going to try and steal your manifestation from you and how they steal your manifestation from you or swap your destiny is they keep you in a low vibrational state um, and then they then go and they use you know some skullduggerous spiritual means through sorcery to take what should come to you um, and they do that primarily by getting you to believe that the thing you're asking for is out of your reach, it's impossible, um, and, and you'll never have it, and, 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 and as long as you feel bad, they can come in and they can swipe it from you. So, so don't let anyone trick you out of your spot, trick you out of your abundance, trick you out of your manifestation by sending you low vibrational energy. The moment you feel that low vibrational energy coming, just say, get thee behind me, Satan. Just like Jesus did to Peter because he recognized the spirit that was operating behind Simon Peter just before the crucifixion when he said, no, Lord, I'll never let that happen to you. I'll die. You know, Jesus was like, no, get thee behind me because in your mind, you don't have the things of God. So for you, what you're asking for is good. It's not hurting anyone. That is something that is godly. If you are now find yourself being confronted by low vibrational energy, spirits, and, and things like that, understand that that is not of God. That is actually of the darkness. And you need to rebuke the darkness. And in order to stay in that high vibrational state where you can claim what is coming to you. So the other thing that Shavi Zain shared was if you use those jar candles that are in a glass container you can write on the candle um, and this is now specifically for the 8th of august the lion's gate portal when it opens and 
So because you've broken the generational curses and you've released all the fears and um, you've released the fears known and unknown, uh, you are now then going to claim your inheritance. So what I've done is I don't have a jar candle. I do have a jar. So I don't know if I can do this so that you can see. But I have... I've tried to write on my jar. And I'm going to show you the jar. Right? You can take a screenshot. And you can... Just see what's ha what's happening there. I'm going to read out what it says. So you're going to write on your jar candle or your glass container or a glass, even a drinking glass is fine as long as your candle fits inside. And you're going to write on one side, I reclaim my inheritance, birthright and sovereignty on behalf of myself and my lineage in spirit and in flesh. So you're going to write, I reclaim my inheritance, birthright, and sovereignty on behalf of myself and my lineage in spirit and in flesh. Then on the other side of your jar candle, and I'm going to do the same exercise again. So if you can buy those pillar candles that come in jars, I know they're very popular in America. You can do that or you can just get any glass container like a, a drinking glass and put your candle inside, drip a little bit of wax so that it stands upright if it's not completely flat um, because then you will be able to do your, um, your prayer with that candle. Remember you pray, you say your declarations and then you leave the candle in a safe place overnight until it burns down and then you can tell by the way it burns. There's so many videos about it which show whether your your um, your prayers or, or, or ritual has been successful. So on this one, I'm just going to show that there. I hope you can read backwards. Um, and I'm going to read it out, but you can take a screenshot as well. And here you're going to write, I am powerful. I am strong. I am courageous. I am bold in spirit and in flesh. The reason why it's called Lion's Gate is because the sun is in the sign of Leo, which is the lion. The sign of Leo is symbolized by the strength card in tarot. And in tarot, um, it, the tarot card's traditional portrayal is that of a girl or a young woman with a lion, like somebody who's taming a lion. So that is the, um, the, the, the reason for that. So you are then going to call upon that energy of strength and power and boldness, which is that um, Leonine or the energy of, of, of Leo, which is the lion. So I don't normally do collective readings, but I just thought I would use my star seed deck and I'm going to show you the cover. This is the deck. So it's the star seed oracle. Um, just to give us an indication of the collective energy. It's interesting because I lit my candle for my prayers and there was a very, very heavy energy when we started. And it was so heavy that as we spoke, I'm just going to show you the candle. I've lit a purple candle. It was so heavy that there was that black mass at the center of the candle and that mass has now burnt out and it has dropped onto the candle but it has even burnt the side of the candle, meaning there's quite a lot of people, I think, who've joined the reading who had heavy hearts and carrying a lot of negative energy. But when, a can when that happens with the candle, what that tells me is that whatever energy that is heavy that has been operating in your life, that energy is being transmuted. So it's being turned to light 
and if you continue with the positivity and the positive affirmations you will receive the things that you are asking for that's what that's the sign that that is giving me i'm just going to shuffle um my cards here um so for all the star seeds and the gifted ones um I mean, we're all gifted. We may not all necessarily have a spiritual calling, but we're all gifted in a certain you know, way. Um, this, this wasn't a very good shuffle. I'm going to try again. But what we're trying to do is bring in the energy of change into, into our life. Okay. Tato Mwangwane, yes, um, thanks for confirming. I, I really, yeah, I could see that there's people with very, very heavy hearts. Um, and it's been a difficult season because the other thing is for this year, especially the season of Ma'at, it's bringing in, and I think if you had a really hectic time in July, okay, in, in, in Kemetic um, Science, Spirituality, that is the season of set. Set is the season, the season of set is where there's a lot of destruction, a lot of chaos, a lot of energy. If you know the story of set, set um, was one of the the, the, the the comedic gods and he killed his brother, Asa, his eldest brother, Asa or Osiris. And... He was so cruel, he not only killed him, but he cut up his body into little pieces and then <laughs> threw these pieces all around the world. And Alset, who is Asa's wife and counterpart um, in Isizulu, we know her as Ulnom Kubulwane, she gathered all the pieces of Asa's dead body and reassembled his body and um, with her sister Nebtet uh, performed a ritual to bring Asa back to life and you know in the interim she um, copulated with Asa and conceived Heru or Horus um, when Asa was now re um, animated his body was reanimated he had to go and live in the underworld because he couldn't live in the world of the living anymore so he became the ruler of the underworld and Heru is the one that eventually took revenge on Set for killing his father so the time of July um, from June 23 to, to July 22 very very difficult time for a lot of people lots of chaos lots of drama lots of conflict that is the season of set it is known by among amazulu the zulu people or the nguni people as umpilizi that's the destroyer so after the season of the destroyer umpilizi is the season of divine justice and that is the season of ma'at that we are now in so I know it's taking a little bit of time for the cards to come through, but my intention is just to understand what is happening for all the star seeds in this collective energy as we prepare for the season of Ma'at, the season of divine justice. Okay. Oh, we've got lots of cards. <laughs> I am going to show you what has come through. So generally, oracle cards, you read them upright. You don't read them in reverse. I'm just going to put them the right way up. Um, just take these messages as they resonate for you. So the first one, oh, this is interesting. I like this message the first card says loosen your grip so for those of us that have different coping mechanisms those of us that are low vibrational remember i mentioned the issue of low vibrational energy and then i talked about i showed you the candle and 
how we actually had a lot of um, high density, low vibrational, dark energy. So that is that energy. It talks about addiction and it talks about letting God in. So it says coping mechanisms, density, addiction, let God in. I'm just I'm going to show this again. If you want to take a screenshot, maybe you want to Google it for yourself. That's also a good thing. And. Oh, this is also a lovely card. So a lot of us empaths have addictions that we have to cope. Some are, of us are alcoholics. Some of us are workaholics. Some of us take different drugs, recreational drugs, just to cope. Others of us are on sleeping pills and medication because we find it difficult to sleep. Um, so we all have different coping me mechanisms. For some of us, it's food. For some of us, it's, se it's sex. Um, for some of us, it's chocolate. But this is just saying you need to loosen your grip Usually you have an addiction because you are trying very hard to avoid dealing with very deep feelings. A lot of us who are empaths are the ones in our lineage who have been chosen to feel all of that pain and hurt from previous generations. And it can be very overwhelming and we have different mechanisms to cope. So we, we, we use these different coping mechanisms to deal with those feelings Sometimes to escape and avoid feeling the feelings. Some of us party a lot because, you know, when you're out there and the music's playing and maybe you're drinking a bit of alcohol, you can forget for a moment about all of this pain, which you don't understand where it comes from. So you need to know that sometimes the pain you're feeling is your own pain from your own hurts and, you know, issues that have happened in your life, personal trauma. But then you can also be feeling feelings that are associated with generational trauma because there is a theory that says we store something like 14 generations of memory in our DNA. So it's important that if you have to cry, cry, deal with those feelings, cry, journal, um, you know, do some exercise, whatever it is to get that energy out of you so that you can heal it, you can get better. That is the most important thing. The second card is this one, which is what I talked about being an empath, empathic starseed. So there are a lot, if not all of you on this call, you are an empathic starseed. So you are an empath. You are among the 15% of people on this earth that are very deep feeling. You may or may not have a spiritual calling to heal, but you will definitely have a spiritual gift you will have one or more of the clairs, clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, which is the ability to feel, um, clair, um, aliens, which is the ability to smell things that people cannot smell, and clairgustance, which is the ability to taste things that people cannot taste in the visible world. Um, you may also have what we call clear cognizance, which is where you just know. You, you just know. You can't explain how you know, but you know. And while your um, human brain is scrambling to find the facts and data to justify what, what you're thinking, your subconscious, you've already received the message from God and your guides, so you know. So a lot of us are empathic starseeds that are here on this live. And the empathic starseed speaks about energetic sovereignty and absorbing what's not yours. So sometimes what happens as empaths is we're like energetic sponges. You go into a crowded place and suddenly you were great, you're feeling great, you were joyful, but suddenly you're feeling sad, tired, drained. And that's because you've absorbed the energy of people around you. So the reason why there's a mirror is a mirror is something that reflects so one of the life lessons for empathic starseeds in this incarnation is for us to learn not to hold on to and take in emotions and energy that are not ours. We need to recognize what is our own energy 
and recognize what is energy coming from outside, either sent to us or just happens to be around, therefore we absorb it. So we have to learn to clear our energy on a regular basis. That's why we take spiritual baths. That's why we meditate and pray with candles and we do breathing exercises and we do grounding exercises because grounding also helps us to release that excess negative energy. So if you recall, one of the things that you write on the candle for Stargate is about reclaiming your sovereignty. So this card for me is confirmation that a lot of us need to reclaim our sovereignty and not take in stuff energy, frequencies, um, feelings, things that are not ours. Okay, so lots of star seeds on the call. Like, that's great news. Um, the times that I've read with this deck, I haven't seen this card coming out. So definitely it's, it resonates with someone. You know, please um, send a heart or something if this resonates with you if you feel led to um, send a, a, a gift a rose or something that would be great that would be appreciated um, but thanks for the likes there so this is very interesting this is the other card beautiful card beautiful colors right again for star seeds some of us are souls were incarnated from the star system of andromeda and it says jump in. And for those that have gifts associated with water or those whose um, ancestors and spirit guides have an affinity to water, I want to another manzi. Um, I think this will resonate. That shape looks suspiciously like an eye to me. Um, I'm just looking at that like the iris of, 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 of an eye. But the card itself says jump in and Andromedan energy. It talks about Andromedan energy. So if you want to, if that resonates with you, Google Andromedan star seeds and see whether that is similar to the energy that you have, your energetic signature. Because we carry our energetic signature from our previous lives into every incarnation. Somehow that energy still comes through. But it talks about adventure and it says, say yes to change. So this um, Lionsgate season, go big or go home. <laughs> don't, don't hold back. Whatever it is you want. The red bottoms, the, the, the Louis Vuitton bag, the Louis Vuitton suitcase set, and I'm being facetious. Whatever it is, ask for it and, and say yes to change. So when you... You be prepared for your life to change radically with this lion's gate um, manifestation season so allow your life to change a lot of people have been stuck um, energetically feeling like you know it's groundhog day you're living the same day every day all day every day um, so you want to just um, how do I put this? You want to, to say yes to adventure and something that is different. Oh, thank you so much for the heart. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, and, and thank you for the bracelets. Um, really, really appreciate it. So the next card is the, again, this is some, a lot of us on the call. Thank you. Uh, for the rose jovial mat matron jovial matron thank you um so i would mentioned the energy of kemet kemetic gods kemetic ancestors a little known secret is that people of color are actually nine ether beings um, we are star seeds we are from other solar systems we incarnated our souls incarnated on earth and what this card is saying is star keeper so it speaks of cosmic ancestors so remember i said we've got a lot of us on here are empaths we have um, spiritual lineages from other planets other star systems other galaxies so this is now your cosmic ancestors that are confirming and it says seed the light by staying grounded 
So if you listen to what I said earlier about staying grounded, um, go outside, stand barefoot, you know, for a few minutes every day, sun gaze, you know, close your eyes and look at the sun and allow the sun's energy to, to, you know, enter your aura and power your aura. Um, it will also help you with your manifestation. So, so definitely do that over the next few days. Um, if it's too cold to go outside and that if you live in Joburg and you're like me, you know, close, sit, sit next to a closed window in a room where the sun comes in, you'll still get the sun, sunlight coming in through the glass. Um, and you can sun gaze and sunbathe all you like there. But, um, your star ancestors are saying, seed the light by staying grounded. So staying grounded means you discharge the negative energy and you allow the light to to come through and to minister to you and again this one is also very interesting and it says the blue flame there's two interpretations of the blue flame the blue frequency of blue is connected to your throat chakra so it allows you to speak and to hear, so it powers your clear audience gifts. It also powers your prophetic gifts if you speak um, and things happen. So as I said, you're going to be speaking things into existence with this Stargate energy, this Lion's Gate energy. And the other interpretation of the blue flame is there are certain of us who are what we call blue ray star seeds. And you know, the, these are people who have um, certain gifts that are associated with the blue ray of creation. Um, blue ray st star seeds are often the most misunderstood of all the star seeds. Um, and, and I'm not sure what's happening, but let me just try and, and, and do this. Um, it's asking me to verify. I don't want my life to end. Maybe it's just kicking me out because I spent too much time. Um, but are we going to get close to finishing now? And it speaks of spontaneous awakening, activation, and integration. So a lot of people are going through serious spiritual awakening and being activated. So I have five cards here. The five cards tell me that this is, five is the number of change. And um, thank you, Wakacha. Um, thanks for that comment. And, and, um, So five is the metaphysical number of change. Um, at the bottom of the deck, this is what is hidden. I, I, I've, um, I'm just going to do this one as a bonus one. There's a person of color there. Um, and it says double mission. So what you're being called to do is as a light worker and a star seed, serve the world by being you. So, so those are the, the messages in short. Um, what I'll probably do is um, post these on Twitter with the messages um, just so that if you, if you didn't get it, if you don't have time to you know, watch the whole live, it's going to stay online, I think, for another 30 days. But when you then get time, um, you can watch. I just want to see if I can just read what the guidebook says. So I just looked at all the cards and I posted. And so the first card, which is Loosen Your Grip, talks about coping mechanisms, density, addiction. And it says, let God in. So God is, you know, behind everything. You know, in him we live and and we have our being so it says we are cyclic beings and mother earth teaches us how to be human every day with the coming and going of the tides and the seasons 
If you're clinging to anything, you're resisting the natural flow of who you are. The things we cling to are so often those we most need to let go of. Food, the substances, the relationship, the job, the people pleasing. And I can testify because I was very much a people pleaser for most of my life. And it's a trauma response. So it's not your fault. But when you know better, you can do better. The things we cling to often cover up our most vulnerable space, the part we are most afraid to leave empty, the part we guard and don't let grace into. But by keeping that space covered with something that doesn't serve us or clinging to it for fear of it not staying of its own accord, we prevent ourselves from receiving the things that will. A Course in Miracles tells us, whatever we leave empty, grace will fill. And the Buddha said, you can only lose what you cling to. Indeed, both are true. You know that old saying, which was, if you love something, let it go. If it comes back, it's yours. If it doesn't, it never was. So that's what this is speaking to. If this card appears, you're being called to find the courage to loosen your grip and give up control. To release your coping mechanisms and leave space for grace and God to enter. To surrender all that feels dense to the divine. Loosening your grip doesn't mean that what you're clinging to will go away. It may or it might stay. But you can be sure that what is for you will find you. Remember that saying, what, seek, what you seek is seeking you. It's just a matter of aligning your frequency and vibration. And then finally it says, and you will breathe easier knowing that you've shifted from relying on your own strength to surrendering the grace of life. Okay, I'm going to respond to Ogamakacha with my Twitter handle. It is at Noma Zino. Okay. And yes, thanks for that, Evril. It's very important um, to, to hold, not to, it's easy to hold on to things that are not important and to let go and let God. Thanks a lot, Tatungwani. I really think so. Um, that is very, very important. Okay, the next um, card is Empathic Starseed. Let me just find this page. It's on page 64. Interestingly, sometimes when you read these guidebooks, um, if you add, so interestingly, the loosen your grip is, is on page 88. So remember what we said about 8-8. Yeah, very interesting. If you add 8 plus 8, it adds up to 16. 1 plus 6 equals 7. 7 is the number of spirituality of the spiritual seeker of the mystic. So a lot of people who are addicted actually are mystics that are running away from their mission. The next one is Empathic Starseed. It's on page 64. 6 plus 4 is equal to 1. The one is the energy of the new beginning, starting something. So if we go to Empathic Starseed, this is what the message says. So originally it said, on the card it said, energetic sovereignty, absorbing what's not yours. And it says, Empathic Starseeds are here to shift the world through their physical presence alone. They don't need to do anything beyond being here, thanks to the energetic change their physical presence causes. Due to their highly sensitive nature, empathic starseeds can struggle with being on earth and in a physical body. Many are prone to addiction and depression or tend to mistake other people's feelings and moods for their own. Natural introverts, they tend to prefer spending time alone or in small groups. Crowds can be overwhelming for them. If this card appears, consider lightening the load energetically. Don't put yourself under such pressure to go out into the world. Be gentle with yourself. Allow extra time and care to recover energetically. If you're feeling pressured to keep up a certain pace, instead put the brakes on and treat yourself like a precious baby. Do whatever you can to take the pressures of the world off your plate. Switch off to switch back on. In today's world, it's normal to feel that we should be doing more, but perhaps being present in our life is enough. This could be a phase you're going through or simply how you are being called to live your life. 
if your work involves giving to others, right now you're being called to keep something for yourself. You don't need to transmute it all. It's okay to look after your own growth and healing before feeling you should offer it to the world. Indeed, it is necessary if you want to continue to do so sustainably. So the Starseed Soul Inquiry says, how can you take better care of yourself energetically? So empath Starseeds, take care of yourselves. Um, yes, give to the world, but don't pour from an empty cup. I forgot the other one, which was, what are you clinging to for fear of nothing coming to take its place? So that's the first one. And then the second inquiry, the question to ask yourself is, how can you better take care of yourself energetically? Then our third card is jump in. That's the one with the eye or somebody diving into what looks like an eye. Um, let's see if I can. Okay, jump in, jump in is on page 82. 8 plus 2 is 10. 10 reduces to 1. Again, card of new beginnings. Remember, it's about adventure. So this is Andromedan energy. So remember, if you feel this resonates, look up the words Andromedan starseed. Okay, I'll just repeat the... Ooh, let me see if I can find it. What page did we say it was? Okay, 64. Um, going to... Oh the, 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 oh, the first one. Sorry, yeah, it was... Um, it's... I'm going to write see if i can re reply there um then everybody can also read it's what are you clinging to so what are you clinging it's clinging to for fear that for fear of oh no sorry <laughs> i should have um needed to to just reply that again i don't know what happened there um i think i need to stabilize there it says what are you clinging to for fear of nothing coming to take its place. Maybe I'll do this as a post as well on TikTok so that um, everyone can catch up. So jump in, says Andromeda is a spiral galaxy, the closest galaxy to the Milky Way. It is believed that Andromedan starseeds are a group of beings who love their freedom. Very adaptable, they have a strong willingness and ability to change and go with the flow. To find calm in the chaos, to swim with the tides, this card is here to encourage you to do the same. Perhaps you have a significant goal or opportunity ahead of you. If so, you're being guided to jump in. Don't wait for permission. Don't stall until you feel ready. Take a deep breath, a good old run up and jump right on in. Life bends for the courageous and courageous is what you're being called to be. You're, all, you're already facing the right direction. The only thing left to do is leap. You'll figure out the details as you go along. Things may not always be smooth sailing. Life on earth rarely is. However, it's the rougher seas that teach us how to sail with glory. And once you know that, you can navigate any sea, ocean or storm. The Andromedans want you to fall in love with surfing the waves of life, to seek more adventures, to embrace your own adaptability and find a way to be calm in the chaos. You didn't come to earth to be passive. You came to earth to truly live. Now, take a good run up and leap and the starseed soul inquiry says how can you be more adventurous how are you being called to jump right on in and leap 
So, yeah, jump in boots and all, guys. That's the message of the card. And then the fourth card is the Star Keeper, and that is 110. One plus one equals two. Two is the number of partnership and union. So you're being also reunited with your um, cosmic ancestors. The place where the people, your soul family, the people where your soul comes from. And this was the one that said cosmic ancestors seed the light by staying grounded. I'm just going to check if we are still live. Looks like we're still live. Um, let's just keep going to the end. It says, you're an ancient keeper of the stars, here to anchor and seed your life in your unique way. You've likely been incarnating on Earth for some time, dedicated to an era of awakening and bringing about a long-awaited shift in the planet's evolution. We're at a tipping point now. The survival of Earth and all its species is coming to a head. The more grounded you remain during this transitional period, the more helpful you will be. The more you tend the flames of your own heart, the more love you will anchor on this planet. The wisdom of the stars is imprinted on your soul. The more soul fragments you call home, the more this wisdom is seeded here. You may be called to be in different places in the world to anchor this light, perhaps by taking a trip or living in a certain location. You may also find yourself experiencing awakening symptoms. The more grounded you remain, the more stable the Earth's energy will become and the less reactive humanity will be. You are here for a double mission, to grow as an individual and as a part of a larger collective that's bringing about a shift in frequency trust that you can be in the world but not of it and lead a truly glorious life okay and the star seed activation here is says just put your hand on your heart because i know you don't all have the card and just say i acknowledge that i'm a star keeper i choose to anchor my light and stay as grounded as possible so i will do another post just to for those that maybe don't have like the, the opportunity to watch the whole thing. And then the last one is the blue flame. Where is the blue flame? Is it under blue or is it under flame? It's under blue. Okay. Blue flame, page 40. Four is the number of the builder. Um, that's the four energy because that's, you know, the most stable of energies. So this speaks of spontaneous awakening, activation, and integration time. And it says, this is a card of awakening and energetic upgrades. Perhaps you're going through a period of spontaneous awakening, receiving visions, and having experiences that are out of the ordinary. In the West, little is known about the process of spontaneous awakening, and it can feel very scary when we're going through it alone. Elsewhere... They can be seen as auspicious experiences with those going through them being treated with tender care. The blue beings are thought to be activating beings with great potential for healing and upgrading our cellular structures. They appear in moments of extreme awakening, activating a physical kundalini awakening and deep cellular and DNA healing. Most people glamorize the awakening process. However, in reality, it's much messier and more difficult than most of us believe. We must first let go of what we think we know for sure and how we make sense of the world. This isn't easy. The awakening process, even when it's spontaneous, takes a considerable amount of time to integrate and awakening without integration can leave us feeling very ungrounded. If you're in the midst of an awakening, the process never ends, quote unquote. Um, in brackets, well, sorry, treat this time, if you're in the midst of an awakening and the process never ends, treat this, time, treat this time as deeply sacred and give yourself ample space to ground and integrate the extreme change your, changes you're going through. And again, this is another affirmation you can say to yourself, allow, I allow myself to surrender to the awakening process that's right for me. I take things slowly and integrate my experience each and every day. Okay, 
Then we're going to look at the last one, which is my interpretation is this is what is hidden from you. And this one says double mission. And it's on page 56. So 5 plus 6 adds up to 11. 11 reduces to number 2. And number 2 is the again a card of partnership and union. So it says light worker star seed. Serve the world by being you. Light worker star seeds are mission and purpose orientated. They many have the feeling that time is running out and there's something they came here to do, create, or contribute. They're here to grow as souls individually, individual mission, and also to contribute to the planet in some action oriented way, collective mission. Their collective mission is often answered through a career calling, quote unquote, or by devoting their life to something bigger. Until they remember their collective mission, it can feel as if something's missing or that they're forgetting something important. It's common for light worker star seeds to feel that they're different and they may car carry soul memories of being visible or sharing their voice. As such, they may protect themselves by dimming their light in order to fit in or by spending time in some sort of closet, such as a spiritual closet. I spent a long time in the spiritual closet, so I can relate to this. If you pull this card, you're being called to remember your collective mission and step into it more fully. You're being reminded that your role as a light worker is to light up the world with your presence. This doesn't have to be a great big thing or decision you need to make. You also don't need to have a great big plan. If you resonate with being a light worker, all you need to do is work out what lights you up, your passions and joys, and keep doing that. When you trust and follow the simple thing path of things that light you up and then lose yourself in the doing, you'll light up the world without even trying. And the Starseed Soul Inquiry says, how can you serve the world by being you? So be yourself and do the things that bring you joy and that is how you light up the world. So I'm going to close the live here. We've been here a lot longer than I was expecting. I was expecting paper, fold it up and put it under your pillow. And um, I'm not sure it's asking me to resume. Put it under your pillow and keep it there for 30 days. But thank you for watching. I really appreciate everyone coming through. And thank you very much. And have a blessed evening. And... Wish you all the best for your manifestations. Good night.